Hi, happy Friday. Um, I thought I'd share some fun facts for philanthropy, uh, or in this case, maybe not so much fun. Uh, I'm taking a leaf out of Lee Sale's book and reading from this fantastic book, Invisible Women, uh, an award-winning book by Carolyn Criado Perez about exposing data, data bias in a world designed by men. I want to start uh, talking about women's health. So I want to talk about Yentl syndrome. Chapter 11. In the 1983 film Yentl, Barbara Streisand plays a young Jewish woman in Poland who pretends to be a man in order to receive an education. The film's premise has made its way into medical law as Yentl syndrome, which describes the phenomenon whereby women are misdiagnosed and poorly treated unless their symptoms or diseases conform to that of men. Sometimes Yentl syndrome can prove fatal. If I were to ask you to picture someone in the throes of a heart attack, you'd most likely think of a man in his late middle age, possibly overweight, clutching at his heart in agony. That's certainly what a Google image search offers up. You're unlikely to think of a woman. Heart disease is a male thing, but this stereotype is misleading. A recent analysis of data from 22 million people from North America, Europe, Asia and Australasia found that women from lower socioeconomic backgrounds are 25% more likely to suffer a heart attack than men in the same income bracket. Since 1989, cardiovascular disease has been the leading cause of death in US women and following a heart attack, women are more likely to die than men. This disparity in deaths has been the case since 1984 and young women appear to be particularly at risk. In 2016, the British Medical Journal reported that young women were almost twice as likely to die likely as men to die in hospital. This may be in part because doctors aren't spotting at-risk women. In 2016, the American Heart Association also raised concerns about a number of risk prediction models commonly used in patients with acute coronary syndrome because they were developed in patient populations that were at least two-thirds male. The performance of the, these risk prediction models in women is not as well established. I could go on and I'm going to bring you a piece of this data every Friday. So if you're interested, grab a copy of Invisible Women, particularly if you're in philanthropy and funding and medical research, it becomes really critical to ask about how women benefit from the studies that you're looking at funding.